Subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. COVID-19 is a respiratory illness, which means that the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes the disease enters our body through respiration. It then passes through the windpipe and then inflicts damage on our lungs. Sometimes it even causes permanent lung or pulmonary damage in people who do recover from the disease. In this video, we're going to be talking about the pathophysiology or the mechanism of infection and the different stages of COVID-19 inside of the human lungs. How do the lungs work in healthy people? The lung's main job is to get oxygen into the blood and then remove carbon dioxide from it. This happens during respiration, which is the process of normal breathing. Normally, when we are not sick, we breathe about 12 to 20 times per minute. When we breathe in, air travels down the back of our throat, passes through the voice box and into our windpipe or trachea. The trachea splits into two air passages called the bronchial tubes. One bronchial tube leads to the left lung and the other to the right lung. For the lungs to perform optimally normally, the airways need to be open as we breathe in and breathe out. Any kind of swelling or inflammation and mucus makes it harder for the air to move through our windpipes and through the airways, leading to breathing difficulty. Breathing difficulty often manifests as shortness of breath and also fatigue, a feeling of feeling more tired than normal. The lungs are made up of air sacs called alveoli, which fill with air during normal respiration. If our lungs are healthy, inhaled air flows through the airways and the alveolar ducts to the alveoli. The alveoli are air sacs surrounded by very thin walls containing blood. If we think of our lungs like a root system, there is a main branch, the trunk, which is the trachea or the windpipe, which then branches into our lungs. And then there are these roots coming out, going into our lungs. And right at the tip of all of those are these air sacs and alveoli. The alveoli are air sacs surrounded by very thin walls containing blood and it is here that gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange between the air and blood. They pass from the air that we breathe in into our bloodstream and vice versa. For COVID patients, however, lungs don't function normally and what ends up happening often is pneumonia, a condition that we're very familiar with. Pneumonia is an infection that causes inflammation in the alveoli present in one or both lungs. Once the virus is detected in the lungs by the body, the immune response immediately kicks in and this sends a large quantity of very specific material to the lungs. These include white blood cells called neutrophils and there are also plasma proteins that go along with it. These also fill the alveoli and these plasma proteins are called opsonins. Neutrophils, the white blood cells, and opsonins, the plasma proteins, are critical to attacking and neutralizing any infection. In fact, if we remember the bleach controversy, there is an interesting related tidbit here. Neutrophils, the white blood cells, actually produce toxic chemicals like hypochlorite to kill a pathogen when they enter the lungs. And hypochlorite is actually the active chemical in bleach and it's produced in mnemonic lungs. Of course, I have to point out, do not consume bleach under any circumstances. The opsonins, which are the blood plasma proteins, again are critical to fighting the pathogen, any pathogen that invades the lungs. But as the lungs get flooded more and more in an effort to combat the virus, there is intense buildup of fluid in the lungs by these opsonins. The white blood cells and the plasma proteins fill the lungs with fluid or pus much like what oozes from a wound. This of course causes cough with phlegm and fever and difficulty in breathing and all the telltale symptoms of a viral infection. It becomes extremely difficult for inhaled oxygen to pass into the bloodstream as the disease progresses and of course vice versa for the carbon dioxide to exit. There are other organisms that also cause pneumonia as well, including bacteria and other kinds of fungi. And pneumonia can range in seriousness from mild to life-threatening. This is true in general and as well as with COVID-19 positive patients. Another effect that COVID-19 can have is something called acute respiratory distress syndrome, also known as ARDS. This occurs after pneumonia has set in and the disease has progressed a little bit. 
Arts is a kind of lung failure that results from blood vessels in our lungs leaking into the alveoli or the air sacs. And it is at this point that patients start needing ventilators. Ventilators work to support the circulation of oxygen inside the body because any infected patient cannot do so naturally by themselves because they suffer from ARDS. And ARDS is very often fatal, which is why the statistics are so bad when it comes to a COVID-19 patient needing ventilators. Ventilators might be available and ready, but if a patient has reached a stage where they need ventilators, the odds of them dying of the disease is much higher. It's higher than 88% as most observations across the world have shown. And if someone does survive ARDS, there will be lasting pulmonary damage, damage to the lungs, sometimes even permanent. In many cases, there can be a reversal, there can be a recovery of this lung damage, but it takes a lot of time. It can take anywhere from a few months to a few years for tissue scarring in the lungs to heal and normal respiratory function to be restored at its optimum level. Sometimes the infection moves beyond the lungs. It enters the bloodstream and once it enters the bloodstream, it immediately spreads to multiple organs. This is a process that is called sepsis where an infection enters the bloodstream and starts affecting other organs leading to organ failure. Sepsis can affect any organ in the body and it causes tissue damage wherever it occurs. A large number of COVID-19 patients have had heart failures and serious kidney damage due to this and this has resulted in a large chunk of deaths. In fact, many post-mortem reports also indicate extremely severe kidney damage caused by sepsis apart from direct attack of the virus. There's also the biggest risk that accompanies all of these infections, which is the risk of a super infection. That means that since our body is expending so many resources to fight off this infection, it leaves the immune system vulnerable and weak against other newer infections. Thus, we could be catching a lot more while we're already infected with COVID-19. An example of how this happens is, of course, with the HIV virus, the human immunodeficiency virus, which directly attacks the immune system, rendering it very weak. And thus, a patient is susceptible to a lot of other diseases that have nothing to do with viral illnesses. Of course, everything we just discussed depends on the severity of the disease. The disease is very severe in older people. Statistics show that the older you are, the higher your risk of dying. It also depends on comorbidities or previously existing underlying conditions. The most severe comorbidities tend to be heart disease and diabetes and hypertension. But if someone has existing lung and breathing difficulties such as asthma, the disease can be more severe, sometimes even deadly. Quality of treatment and care also matters. But as hospitals start getting more and more crowded as the disease progresses through the population, the quality of care will naturally come down. The only option for all of us now is to slow down the infection and continue to flatten the curve. So physical distancing is the only way out. It is important to remember that you are safe only when the people around you are safe. This is Sandhya Ramesh from Bengaluru for The Print.